It is Thursday, April the 4th. Anyway, we are getting snow today. I don't know what's going on with this weird weather. Anyway, it's cold and wet and yucky out, so I've got a turkey soup on the go. Mom had froze some turkey for me, leftovers from Easter. So I've got a turkey vegetable soup simmering. I was gonna make some rolls and then I was like, you know what, I think I'm gonna make garlic cheese fingers. The kids are coming for supper. They love garlic cheese fingers dipped in doner sauce. So I am going to make that dough. I'll show you what you need and the process. It's super easy and it's so good. And then I just bought like a, a store bought um, garlic butter spread, I guess. I'll show you what I use after anyway. And I'll grate some mozzarella and bake it. And we'll have garlic cheese fingers and turkey veggie soup later. So. I'll take you along. Okay. So for ingredients, you're going to need two and a half teaspoons of pizza yeast and one teaspoon of white sugar. You're going to put that in a bowl and add one and a half cups of warm water and let it bloom for 15 minutes. After the 15 minutes, you're going to add three and a half cups of flour one teaspoon of salt and two tablespoons of oil. Uh, mix it all up, give it a good knead, and you're going to let it rise for an hour.
happy Friday. It is April the 12th around noon and I wanted to pop on and uh, do an update and catch you all up on what I've been doing lately. Uh, if you've never watched before, my name's Amanda. I live in Fredericton, New Brunswick, the east coast of Canada. I am the dyer behind Sweet Skein of Mine and I love to knit, do all the crafts, cook, journal, um, before this part of the video, I, I decided to start doing little snippets of life, almost kind of like for me to video journal life. And um, I think it's going to be nice to look back at these little moments. Um, this month, well, we're in April now. Last month, at the end of the month, we celebrated Alex's 23rd birthday. We had Easter dinner at Mom's. What else? I've done a little bit of dyeing, not a lot. I'm, my back's been really bothering me lately, so I've decided to kind of just do what I need to do around the house with I'm moving and all of that fun stuff. So dyeing has been at a minimal, but I've gotten some a few things done. Uh, what else? I finished, I have a half finished object, a full finished object, um, some dream knitting to share, yeah, so yeah, it's Friday, it's rainy, we're having an odd spring right now. Some days it's like plus 13, it's beautiful out, and then it rains for two days. But anyway, off and on, it, I'll take it over the snow. Sometime, some Aprils we've had like piles of snow in the front yard, and right now the grass is green. It's just rainy and damp, but that's okay. I'm sadly missing the Fiddlehead Fiber uh, Festival that's happening this weekend, uh, today and tomorrow in Bristol, Florenceville, New Brunswick. So yeah, if you're in the New Brunswick area or able to get there, I know there's going to be a lot of amazing vendors. There's going to be classes, but I just, I can't make it right now. I've just got too much going on. So I could make the day happen. It's kind of getting yarn ready and having enough to to have a, a booth set up. So I wasn't able to, but if you're in the area, go check it out for sure. It's going to be a good one. I think, yeah, this is the second annual one. Last year was wonderful. So Robin Oaks organizes it and she does a great job. So, so next year, next year I'll take part. Uh, I have one half finished object. Is that what you call it? <laughs> I had mentioned last episode that I wanted to do some socks out of my colorway Maverick. So I did up some sock skeins with this that came with a mini in this fluorescent pink. And my friend Nancy Wheeler has some beautiful sock patterns out there. And I've never knit a sock with a pattern in it before. I've always just done a vanilla sock. So I had spoken about wanting to do one of hers and she sweetly gifted me a couple of her beautiful patterns. So I decided to go with Smoke Gets In Your Eyes and it's got this, it's just like little baby cables. I'll show it to you on the blocker and then I'll take it off to show you the pattern a little bit better. But um, I did my cuff differently than the pattern said, but that was it. So. I, I'm so happy that I used just a tonal yarn. It shows the pattern up absolutely beautifully. So here's all those sweet little cables that go up the sock. This was a, a an easy pattern. Like I've, not that I've never done a pattern sock before because I thought it was gonna be hard. I didn't want to concentrate on something with small, like smaller needles and something that I wanted in my bag to just pick up and pick away at. This was such a rhythmic, intuitive pattern. Like I didn't even, I mean, I had to check things off to kind of keep me on track for what row I was on, but it was so easy going. I loved it, Nancy, well done. So easy to read, um, all of it. I couldn't say better things about it. And I absolutely love that I did a little shorty. Sometimes I'll do taller socks which is nice to kind of peek out of your boot but I really like this size and I love the colorway I think it turned out so fun so I have one done and then I may as well get into what I have on I updated my Ravelry and put it on Instagram this morning I did another Saturday shrug so if you've seen this be seen me um 
talk about shrugs before it's on my Instagram where I post probably most of my project updates but I wear this one all the time it's a, it's the Saturday shrug by Jackie Rose it's on Ravelry it's free um, I did mine in bulky yarn I know some people do them in DK I don't really I don't gauge swatch I don't it does I don't think it matters what your gauge is when it comes to a shrug uh, when you're finished knitting it it looks weirdly tubular <laughs> but it goes on and it stretches and you've got this great little mm. hug a shrug hug um, my first one I did in my girl and Barbie shoes this one I did in my new colorway Maverick and tickled pink so all of my mods are on Ravelry, but um, I cast on 128 stitches on a six millimeter needle. I knit 12 rows of each color four times. So I've got four green stripes, four pink stripes, and I love it. It's so cozy. I did the Jen's super stretchy bind off just so that I had more of a more give at the bottom uh, that's on YouTube super easy but it does create a little more stretch a little more give at the bottom of your shrug so this is just a fun easy pattern I love having these mindless things on the go and this is something that I genuinely wear I love having this in my wardrobe um, yeah, I've given a couple away as as presents and yeah, I'll definitely make some more so Love this one and this is my new favorite And what else I have I've been blanket knitting still working on This where I'm holding one mini held together with this yak sock it's just I love how the yak sock it's just um this is undyed it's just the natural color and I love how it's kind of muting the colors but it's giving just a soft palette I'm going to try to use a lot of pinks all my favorite colors and this blanket for myself I should give you a little tour of the other blankets that I've made Hang on. So over the years, I have always loved making blankets. And this one you've seen before. This is the one that Teddy and I are always curled up with. This is the Cozy Comfy Throw by Homespun House. So I held a, a mini strand. I used uh, my Chelsea Yarns Advent a couple of years ago. I held it with undyed yarn and so it's double stranded to create a DK weight. And then you put this I cord edge around the circumference of the blanket when you're done. Anyway, this blanket is so well loved. You can see it's <laughs> the cashmere is a little pilly, but anyway, I love it and it's so so well used. <laughs> um my cozy memories blanket I still haven't put an edging on this yet and I have to this is like ginormous this was years in the making I just was using scraps and I should have just laid it all out to show you but just to give you an idea get a little bit of everything in there anyway I just I haven't put an edging on it yet and I don't know why I guess more or less I don't really know what I want to put on for an edging so have that and then these blankets I mean this just reminds me of my hockey mom days me and some hockey moms got into these rag quilt blankets so this one's mine I kind of used a soft <laughs> a soft palette with a little like of the like boho chic kind of flowers and some plaid so it's kind of ratty looking now <laughs> and this is Alex's because in the day he was a goalie 
anything hockey so there's hockey pucks and just gonna save these for them someday they may want them back <laughs> and this one Sarah's she had picked out all this fabric it's daisies this used to be her favorite color this turquoise yeah these rag quilts were fun to make super easy i remember the worst part was always um, snipping the edges it just got hard on the hands and i pulled this one out too because this is something else that we this reminds me of uh, the summer the baseball moms we would all <laughs> get together and make these fleece blankets where you yeah you take two pieces i took the red boston red Sox and then you snip the ends and tie them in a knot just to create this little tied edge on them. I keep this blanket right in my truck just in case we ever need it for anything. So there, a little tour <laughs> of my blankets. I was thinking, you know what? I wonder if anybody else really got into this kind of stuff once upon a time. We love blankets around here. So there, my, there's my little blanket tour. I've been making blankets for years, whether I've been knitting them. I did have some crochet ones too, but I can't find them. I think they're in the basement somewhere, but um, definitely went through the rag quilt phase with the uh, squares of flannel. And then, yeah, I remember snipping the edges and our hands would get so sore, but, um, and then we went through the fleece blanket stage where you're, yeah, putting the two layers of the fleece lining them up yeah cutting the squares out at each corner and then lining up and doing the the fringe and tying them in a knot so yeah and this one this one will be for me as well <laughs> yeah we love blankets around here so and I meant to dig out my McCausland's one too I was upstairs kind of throwing everything on a bed I have a McCausland's uh, wool blanket that I got at the uh, Tatamagoosh Fiber Festival a couple years ago and I love it love it's just so pretty it's like neon green and pink so I'll show you that another time so I have to cast on another sock to make a mate for this guy I've also had this one kind of stuck in my purse this sweet little bag made by my friend Louise in the Netherlands she sent that to me I think it was last year wasn't it Louise did a little swap so in this cute little bag, I have another sock that I've kind of had on the go for a while. This colorway I dyed special for um, Michelle and June and I for when we went to Rhinebeck last year. We called it um, the Rhinebeck Jam. So it's like brown and gold and pink. I want to try to uh, try to reproduce this again. I didn't keep the recipe, but I think I know what I could do. Anyway, so I'm on the heel flap for this right now, and it's going to be another fairly short pair of socks. So I have that. And then Andrea Mowry was, um, she put out a new sweater pattern called Broom, B-R-U-M-E, and I want to do that. It looks like a really staple kind of piece. Um, raglan, it's got the little flip, the flipped uh, neck inside or I guess how do I explain that you knit it and then turn it inside and stitch it down so it's like uh, rolled over and I think I want to do it in mohair like I've got a DK mohair I did my prepster scarf in that but I don't have it handy do I have any DK probably not anyway I'm going to dye I think the colorway rhubarb it's an old colorway of mine and I don't have any in my shop right now but I'm gonna bring it back my yarn is kind of, my shop is on low right now because I'm trying to dye and make a little bit of an abundance for when I go to the Prince Edward Island Fiber Festival in the fall and Gagetown. So I'm trying to, when I have time to dye, I'm creating my little stash for all that. But I am popping things into my shop here and there. So once I dye that DK rhubarb, I'll be throwing it up on Instagram or I'll, I'll show it here. And yeah, so the broom sweater is next on my list. So some new colorways that I did show on Instagram. 
like I said, I haven't been doing a ton of dyeing, just a little bit here and there. But um, this one's called Waiting for Spring. Just pretty pops of bright colors. I did this one. This is called Blue Hydrange. I had somebody request um, a wreath colorway in like a Blue Hydrange uh, concept and I did it for her and she loved it and if, so that's what inspired me to go ahead and do some sock yarn in the same colorway which is super pretty it's just nice and soft and then this one in my shop today this is called the tea party it's got like toffees and a little bit of purple and some pinks and some blush like a blush orange in there so I did that something else I popped in my shop is um, I did some knitting cords these have been around for a while. This is one of those notions that I think is actually useful. I love having it. So it's got two 35 inch cords in it and one 60 inch cords. I think most people know how to use these, but if you've never seen them before, it's a, it's a silicone cord. You take your needles. Let's see, what do I got here? Take your needle and you stick the tip into it and it creates like quite a nice section. Anyway, it's great for sweater knitting. So if you want, if you're at the place where you want to try on, instead of having to put all your stitches on hold with scrap yarn or whatnot, you can use a silicone cord. So yeah, you just put it on each end of your needle like that. And then you can just pull your stitches across and it just kind of, it's just like a little needle extender so yeah, I thought I'm gonna put those in my shop because I do think they're invaluable and it's one of those notions that I think people could actually use. So, and I'm kind of getting some fun things organized and ready for, for my two shows in the fall. So I have those in the shop now. That. And then as of today, I keep tins for everything. As of today, I got these little mini stainless steel crafting needle or uh, scissors for my shop. I think they're adorable. They're just nice and small, perfect for like a notions pouch or uh, and but they're nice and sharp for your sewing or your knitting. So I have those in my shop now too. It's kind of fun to expand and and have things that I guess I think I think are useful and invaluable. So <laughs> wanted to show you that. What else? Um, we had the eclipse. I did do footage. I'll pop, I'll put that in the end. So if, when I'm done rambling, if you want to watch what uh, it looked like in our neck of the woods for the eclipse, I got some really good footage and I was, I did it with my glasses, like the special glasses and everything. So you can see it. It was phenomenal. Super weird. Like when it got dark, how cold it got. And then uh, all like the dusk to dawn lights downtown started to pop on because it did actually it was just tricking all of the system into thinking that it was getting dark out and it was nighttime so all the lights went on and it got cold and we were able to sit and just take this in and I'm so happy we went it was last minute I said to Jane and Dan we should go downtown and go check this out so Dan brought his welding lens and Jane was able to find us a couple pairs of glasses so yeah I did do footage so I'll I'll put that in at the end to show you and what else I made a list of things I wanted to talk about what have I been watching I have been watching the bear there was only two seasons and now I'm done but I really enjoyed that my son kept saying you've got to watch the bear it's so so good so I'm always late to the game and I finally watched it and I loved it uh, a new podcast. It's fairly new. Um, if you haven't seen it, you have to check it out. It's my friend Jen and Corinna. They ha it's called, I wrote it down so I say it right, Knitting Up North with Jen and Corinna. I'll put it on the screen. It's a, it's a friend duo, a new knitting blog that's out there, and it's excellent. I really, really enjoy it, ladies. And um, I met I got to meet Jen at Rhinebeck last year, and yeah, you're both awesome. So I just, anyway, I love your podcast. Keep, keep, keep doing them. They're so informative, and I love seeing what you guys are making. 
So last but not least, my favorite product. I don't think I did one last time. So now that summer's here, I just did the, uh, the Sephora sale just happened too. So I was able to get uh, some new goodies for Sarah and I. And this is one of them. I've been using this for years and um, I do like a good sunscreen in my moisturizer. And I've tried quite a few and sometimes I either don't like the tackiness of it or I don't like the smell. This is going on year two or three and it's the Super Goop. Put this up here super goop daily sunscreen spf 40 and it is it's so nice underneath your makeup or you, you don't get greasy from it it's not i don't know if you know what i mean when i say like the, the smell the smell is fine <laughs> it doesn't have a it hasn't just a nice clean smell to it and it's not sticky and tacky like some of the uh, moisturizers that have sunscreen in them so I do recommend this. So I am so conscious about taking care of my skin now that I'm, uh, I guess in my 40s, I tried to really be aware of how I was treating my face and my skin when it came to be, uh, you know, sitting out in the sun too much. So I have this. And what else? I made a list. Did I want to tell you anything else? I think that's it. Um, anyway. I hope everybody's having a good day. It's Friday. We are going to, yeah, because I've got to miss the the Fiddlehead Fiber Festival. It's because we got to work around here. So close to being show ready. I'm listing it the 1st of May, so I want everything. This office is like the last thing I'm going to do because it is covered in journaling, supp journaling supplies and yarn. And mm -hmm, it's the catch-all right now, so... Anyway, well, have a great weekend, everybody, and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will be back probably in a couple more weeks. I'm, I think I'm enjoying doing the little format of showing a little bit of what's going on in the kitchen, what's in life, you know, for any milestones or just stuff. Anyway, so thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay, bye.